Hello everybody, this is Kaizen here and welcome to a brand new series here on Mine Colonies. I have been so excited to do this with you guys ever since I messed up my old world. This series guys is going to be pretty epic and there is so much to talk about here today as a bit of a preparation episode for this series and also some tips for you guys on how you can get started best in Mine Colonies if you are playing along at home. Now a few things to say guys, I am using obviously the Mine Colonies mod but I'm having a load of other mods that I've got in this pack as well. They will be listed in the video description and will, there will also be a link to my website where you can download that as well as this texture pack that I use if you're interested in that. Uh, all free of course, but uh, if you want that, that is all there for you. Uh, so this video will focus on mine colonies and how to get started just using the mine colonies mod and uh, things you want to think about relevant to that particular mod. However, because we've got this whole mod pack going, if a lot of you want and request that you see a bit of a starter guide to getting started with this entire mod pack that I'm using, then let me know down in the comments and I will of course do that video in the future for you. Just to say as well guys we have built an incredible community around this and I am so proud to have each and every one of you here as part of this. You'll see right here behind me I've already got started on some stuff and we're going to come on to that in a bit. I did that in a Twitch stream and a huge thank you to everyone who came. It was my most successful stream to date guys. We had over 60 viewers at one point and it was an insane stream so big shout out to everyone who joined me there. If you guys want to join the next one the link is in the description and you can come and follow me to never miss a stream. Of course you can also join things like my Twitter, my Discord, again all the links are in the description description and uh, then you will make sure that you never miss any streams that way too because I do of course announce them on there. Also at the moment if you want to name the colony that I'm making here then you can do that. You can submit your names on Reddit, link in the description. Uh, so as I said, community here is pretty big guys and uh, I will be streaming Mine Colonies so if you want to come and say hi, give me your ideas or just you know hang out while I'm playing Mine Colonies, my Twitch is the place to do that. Uh, so I think that's about everything I kind of need to mention here. Uh, let's get into my starting guide, my starting tips and tricks if you yourself are starting on the mine colonies mod pack so my first little tip for you guys is don't rush into making your colony i know that you're playing mine colonies and you guys want to just get started on that straight away because you're super excited to go and build all the buildings get your town hall built get all the miners in place all this kind of stuff i get it guys believe me i do but don't rush into doing it, okay? There's some other things you want to be thinking about first. And like any Minecraft mod pack, when you start out, it's all about the vanilla things, really. So first up, you have to think about food. Now, if you're playing in the 1.15 version like I am, then sweet berries are a fantastic option for food. Why? Because you can find them reasonably easily, and also you can plant them and farm them just like I have here. The slabs over the top mean you will not get hurt every time you farm them. So we can see here, we can right-click and harvest these berries, but it is impossible for me to walk into them because if you do walk into the berry bushes, it hurts. <laughs> so that is definitely a useful tip right there. Uh, now, the other thing as well is when you spawn into your world, have a look around, do a bit of exploring, see if you can find a village or a desert temple or any of that sort of stuff. And food should be your first focus, guys. Make sure you get that. The other thing is to get some tools going. Obviously, you're not going to be at diamond straight away. You'll be using uh, like stone tools. Also, these are named. This is a Twitch thing. <laughs> Stop by my Twitch one day if you want to find out how these names got in but you guys could be naming my next item guys uh, just doesn't mention why they have weird names but do make sure you get all of your tools set up also be sure to get yourself a boat and a bed a boat so you can go exploring explore the seas find yourself a cool place to live and the bed so that you can sleep through the night time and you won't die <laughs> and obviously you reset your spawn point now these are you know they're kind of obvious things so if you knew those congratulations to you uh but i do have to you know kind of include them because people are starting at different points so definitely Definitely be sure to get all the basics down, okay? Focus on the basics first before you move into anything too mine colonies related. So the next tip I'm going to give you guys is think about where it is that you want to live straight from the off. Think about where you want to be building, what sort of style you want to build and that type of thing. I highly recommend you start up a creative test world where you can test out all the different build styles of the different buildings, see what you like, see what tickles your fancy and get yourself an idea of where you want to live. Then of course go exploring for that. We're going to come on to exploring exploring in just a second but I do have one further tip about if you're looking for somewhere that you think you want to settle and that is if you press escape and open to land put allow cheats to on and start your land world you can then do slash game mode spectator 
Okay, so what this is going to do is you can fly up at this point and you can have a look around. So if you think you found the perfect place to live, take a second to have a look around. At the end of the day, guys, you are going to be there for a very long time. So be sure you like it. We're making a pirate sort of, excuse me, a pirate's cove sort of colony thing going on here. Pirate island, that sort of thing. As you can see, there's nowhere really better for that. I'm also going to be doing a lot of sky islands, guys. We're going to make floating islands around this with mine colonies buildings up on them. That's going to be an interesting challenge in and of itself. But using spectator mode really allowed me to fly around this island and be sure it was right for me before I got started. So I thought I would mention that. It's also a very useful thing to do when you're trying to look at buildings, when you get to placing buildings, uh, to see if they fit, if they look right, and that type of thing. So it's a really useful way of planning out your colony. When you're done, you can just go ahead and go slash game mode survival be sure not to do that when you're high up in the air of course or you will die but that is definitely a useful thing to think about where it is you want to live using those colony styles uh, like have a lot of thought in mind about that the other thing to think about is nearby resources, guys. If you're going to be doing a lot of building out of wood, make sure there's a lot of wood nearby, because otherwise it's going to be a bit of a grind. And if you specifically want jungle wood, then you probably want to live near a jungle. If you want to do lots of building out of glass, you want to near, uh, live near a desert, for example. So these are things to definitely think about. The final tip I have on that is do not live too close to a village. Sometimes the citizens and the villagers, they don't interact all that well at times. So just to be on the safe side, I would say do not live near a village and if you're looking for somewhere that's easy to build on obviously somewhere that is flat and clear of lots of trees and that sort of thing is going to be useful so factor all of this stuff in but once you've thought about it and you have somewhere in mind that you want to live like i did when i was looking at this island then you can go ahead and explore you can go and explore your world and hopefully find the exact place that you want to live but while you're exploring guys be sure to check certain things out keep an eye out for villages and temples Keep an eye out for sunken ships and you can get treasure maps. We did that in my stream and if we go into mining here you can see I got these 10 emeralds from that as well as a whole load of other loot like diamonds and uh, like a couple of diamonds, a bit of iron, gold. Guys, it was well worth doing so you definitely want to do that. Now I am using journey map which means I have these things which are waypoints. If you do not have this you still need to somehow make a note of your coordinates. You can do it on your phone, you can write it down on a bit of paper or you can do it in game if you use a book an ink sack and some feathers you can make the book and quill item okay and that will allow you to make a note of your coordinates so do note the coordinates of your base but also note if there's like a dark home uh, dark oak biome that you find for example or a jungle biome make a note of those coordinates guys you might need them later on in the game uh, and it is going to be super useful to you so do make a note of any coordinates of anything interesting when you're exploring the other thing to say is if possible i would recommend you take shears with you when you explore if we go to our little storage system we've got over here, you'll see I got a ton of wool whilst I was out exploring. Now, you are going to need a lot of wool in the game, so getting it while you're exploring just makes a whole lot of sense. So I do highly recommend that you do take shears with you if you're able to do that. The other thing I'd say is if you see any cows on the way, do be sure to kill them. Now, the cows, uh, they're quite a useful resource early game, guys. You can get the beef, which you can cook into a very good meal. Uh, it's, it's a good food source early game, right? The other thing is the leather. Now, the leather is super useful for a few different things but specifically early game i do recommend that you rush getting your enchantment set up so you need it for the books to make the bookshelf so i highly recommend you kill all the cows and start a cow farm we're going to come on to farming next guys but those are my little tips for when you're out exploring so the next thing to talk about guys is resources you are going to need a whole lot of resources to build your economy believe me and uh, just when you think you've got enough you'll have to go and get more so you want to start out by getting tons and tons of resources and doing the obvious things like your mining, your wood cutting, and the wool and dye that I mentioned. So do pick up all the flowers around you when you're out exploring because you're going to need those dyes for different colored wool and like concrete and, and glass, all, all the stuff that you need it for, okay? You just, just trust me, you need it. <laughs> uh, so get all that stuff, but maybe do not mine in an area where you're going to have your town mine later in the game because otherwise you're kind of wasting that town miner. Same thing can be said for the lumberjack. If you're going to have a lumberjack area, maybe go cut the trees down somewhere else. These are just things to think about. But the best thing you can do in terms of resources is get yourself some farms set up. So this is kind of a bamboo farm. Now, bear in mind, these are all early game, guys, okay? It's just about planting them somewhere they're going to grow. So like my berry farm for food, right? And I've got a chicken farm because I had them on the island. They'll be useful for food too. Cows we already talked about. Uh, as I say, I've got the bamboo here. 
I got a load of sugar cane growing down over here. Now again, that's going to help us to rush the enchantment setup, okay? Because we need all of the paper that you get from sugar cane. So I have planted tons of that and I will keep harvesting all of that as well. Uh, the other thing with sugar cane is it's very useful for paper. And paper feeds into the school, library and university building. So that's really awesome. You're going to need it for that. And of course, your Elytra Rockets late game. Arguably the best farm to start early game guys is the wheat farm. This wheat farm is it has a lot of things right first of all it can be food because three of these of course will give you bread which is a pretty reasonable early game resource and it is one that you can keep getting more of so that's quite useful. Uh, the other thing that it does of course is it allows you to feed your sheep and your cows to get breeding them and of course a sheep farm early game not a bad idea because I did say you will need a lot of wool so yeah you definitely want to think about that. Now I just happened to grab some pumpkins and I made a little pumpkin farm. This is not necessarily essential <laughs> but the wheat farm, cow farm, sugar cane farm definitely essential with a sheep farm probably the next thing that you want to do so once you have all your resources set up and your farms are growing then you can start doing some work in your local area because as you're working in your local area your farms are going to be growing so then you can keep harvesting them as you're working now what i've done here is just got a little bit of a base set up so we have our bed which is near where we're going to be building our town but also not too near so it's not going to interfere with any town buildings or anything like that late game i've got my array of furnaces my amber my like useful chest of stuff that I use like often <laughs> and then I've also got myself a storage system set up and again I recommend you do this as soon as possible because when you're looking for tons of resources that you need to build your buildings it's gonna be a lot easier to come in here and go and have a look and grab whatever you need or instantly know like hey that's my wood I need wood <laughs> you know so definitely get this stuff set up early on it would be my advice to you um, now once that is all set up the next thing you should start doing guys this is a biggie plan your colony from the start okay think about it like right from the off where do you want it to go now when you build your colony uh, particularly early game it can be difficult to have enough space in your colony space is a commodity guys so don't spread things out too much i made that mistake in my last series i made roads that were five wide with another sort of strip on the either side of them uh, yeah don't do that <laughs> that is too wide i think three wide would be plenty but that is like a useful thing to do now the big thing you're going to need to think about is where is your town hall going to go your town hall is really going to need to be the center of your town because everything sort of expands out from there in terms of the borders and stuff now i did make a video that shows you how you can expand your borders and the town hall isn't 100 percent necessary for that so there are ways around it but early game it just it's good practice okay so really think about where you want your town hall to go what style of town you're going to do and start planning it and this again guys is where that game mode spectator that i showed you earlier in the video really comes in handy you can but yeah yourself in spectator have a little fly around and see exactly where you want everything to go so plan it from day one guys i know it sounds like early and stuff but i still heavily recommend it okay so you followed all my tips exactly <laughs> now you are ready to start your colony great stuff guys how do you do it well i can show you in my jei here which again you won't have uh with my colonies but you will have with my pack anyway uh supply ship chest or a supply camp chest these are how you get started guys so the supply ship you can just make out of boats you'll see i have one on me i actually found this so again this is where exploring and those sunken ships and things really come in handy now as we're doing a pirate colony i am of course going to be going for the supply ship but this is purely personal preference you could build a supply camp as well that is just chests in an array like this and it, again super simple to make guys okay now whichever one you make you're going to need to place if it's the supply camp you can place it on land that makes perfect sense the boat uh, not so much <laughs> okay you want it to go in the water so you might be thinking okay here i am in the water i'm right clicking and nothing is happening well what you need to do guys is get roughly the area that you want it to go and i'm thinking this little cove right here this is going to look great with a pirate ship in it particularly as we build up this piratey town so this is where i want to build it so i'm going to come out to about here i'm going to right click as close to the water as i can get on the floor just like that and then you want to hit the escape button okay so you hit escape and you can see it right there. If I right click again, this screen comes up right here. Now this screen here is everything you need to choose the type of ship that you want over here from this drop down and also to position it using the arrows just like this. We can even flip it if we want so that the sails going differently and stuff there as you see. We can rotate it as well so it could be facing any orientation we want. We can even change the Y value but a floating ship like that, I don't know, maybe a ghost ship in later on in the game but for now 
Let's put it down in the water, shall we? <laughs> so let's have a look. So to get it orientated correctly, if I do that, you can see the water here is flowing. So that is not correct. So if we go down one more, it no longer is. That means it's sat perfectly on top of the ocean. Now there are, as I said here, all different styles. So let's have a look through them. So you can click on the different styles like this, or you can simply hit the arrows here. So we can go from Acacia here to an Asian ship which that is a pretty good looking ship, but I think at some point I'm going to do an Asian pirate colony. So uh, we're going to have multiple colonies in this, that I will save for a future video. But uh, as cool as it is, that's not that's going to suit a different colony better. Birch isn't bad, but it's not my favorite material to build out of. The Dark Oak ship, oh my goodness. All right, now we are starting to look piratey, right guys? This to me, this is getting very piratey, and I think this might be the one we go with. We'll, we'll have a look at some others. The jungle one, for example, but that would look better over by our jungle later on, because you can make more of these later on in the game. Uh, medieval, of course, could be very useful, but that to me is a bit like the good guys. And being a pirate, I'm not the good guy. <laughs> I'm the pirate guy, right? So we don't want to look too good here. We're not the, uh, the British, you know, medieval galleons. We are pirates at the end of the day. Uh, well, Medieval Spruce. Now, this is a Viking ship, if ever I saw one, right? That is what immediately comes to mind for me, at least. You guys may disagree, uh, but we're not Vikings, so we're going to keep looking. Mesa Nordic. Okay, this is potentially even more Viking than the last Viking ship. And in the future, I'm picturing we can have, like, galleon armies coming at us and stuff like this. But I get ahead of myself. So, uh, oh, a space war ship. Look at this. Interesting. This is a very cool design. So you can see, guys, there are so many different designs in this game. And obviously not just for ships, but like for every block. Um, okay, so what, where are we here? Space Wars. Uh, oh, stone ship. Wouldn't that sink? <laughs> that looks like it's going to sink to me. I don't want that one. Uh, just your classic wooden, which does look pretty cool. Um, but now we're going back through. Dark Oak to me. This is the pirate ship for us. Uh, now, it makes sense, I guess, if it had just sailed in to deliver supplies, that it would be orientated this way. It has sailed in to drop stuff off. So we're going to position it like this. Uh, and this is where I said, am I still yeah, open to land? Slash game mode, spectator. This is really useful. We can now fly around and see, is it in the right place or not? So this needs to be way more central to this cove. So we can come back down here, put ourselves in survival, right click that, bring it way over here like this. Now I will have it slightly closer to this side than to the other side, because we're going to eventually build a bit of a deck going out to it. It's probably something I'll do on stream actually. Uh, but let's have a look again, back into specy mode. Okay, this is going to be good. We can have a little bit of a, a deck coming out to it. It looks like it would sit in the water there pretty happily. Uh, it's not like too close to any land or anything like that. So, so far, I am happy. Let me put myself back in survival. Let me check the Y value. And okay, that there is perfect. We're going to hit the tick when we're done. There we go. Now, advancement made. Mine colonies, it says there. Start off mine colonies by crafting supply camp or ship and placing it, basically, which is what we have done. So, very good. Now, uh, supply ship, supply camp, as you might expect, has supplies on it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sleep as it's turning nighttime. Then we'll come back and look at those supplies, which is how we're going to start a town hall, which is, of course, your first proper building rather than a supply building that you're going to build in your mine colonies world. So, as you can see, there is a ladder here. <laughs> so, we can climb up the ladder and uh, explore the ship a little bit, which is pretty cool. Uh, I love the level of detail that goes in these things. Now, you get a lot of starting resources with these guys. I mean, you can take all of this stuff, right? If I want to take that compass, I can. I'm going to leave it here for the aesthetic. Uh, we can make this stuff if we want it. But you can you can take any of this stuff that you may want. You see there's a cartography table there, barrels, furnaces right here. Uh, through these doors in the back, you've got one of these things. Uh, can we not take that? I thought we could take that. Maybe if we destroy this, and then we can take that. Aha. So this is what I was talking about before, guys. Your book and quill is in here. So you can write, you know, home and then your X, Y, Z coordinates of all that stuff. So definitely a useful little thing to have. We're going to go ahead and put that back. And uh, let's put this back as well for now. Um, yeah, there we go. It looked better like that. <laughs> this is like the captain's quarters, I guess. There's even a bed in here, guys. So you could maybe place this before doing any of your other stuff. Use the bookshelves and beds and all that stuff if you want. Now, in this one right here, this rack right here, this is everything. This is your town hall building and your building tool. Building tool, probably the most important tool in the game. Now, if you do lose this one or you need another one, they are very simple to make. So don't stress too much. Um, also, the town hall building, if we go to, let's see, town hall. Uh, you can see the recipe for a town hall here. There isn't one, is what I'm trying to say. So, make sure you don't lose that. <laughs> okay, keep that safe, guys. Uh, that's very important. Uh, let's, let's have a little explore of the ship while we're here. Why not? Because I think, yep, yeah, there is. So, starting tools, guys. Uh, I don't really need any of this stuff right now. But, uh, sets of starting tools. Starting food. Now, food, I will absolutely take. 
Um, it was sort of glitched out a bit there, but we definitely have it. More beds down here, guys. Loads of hay, and I am probably going to take the hay. The hay is useful. So these things, guys, are definitely useful. I might come and get this later on. Um, but look at this. We've got dark oak saplings. That is fantastic. And acacia. So we don't need this stuff near us. We've got spider, or cobwebs, I should call them, uh, for decoration here. This is awesome. These are why these things are so good in the game. Birch as well. We don't have that nearby. Spruce, we don't have that nearby. We can set this up now to make our colony pretty much like full of all the different resources we want right from the off so these ships are really awesome guys explore them in full like you're gonna need to right you can get loads of cool things out of them uh and then obviously harvest anything that you want to take with you so uh once you've done that of course then it's time to go back and look at where it is you want to place your town hall so uh, let's go and have a look at that so as you can see guys i have hopped over into a bit of a tutorial world that i've created here today the reason being is before i place the town hall in my world i want to build a pretty big mound to build it on top of because we've got some really cool build things going on with that uh, and I didn't want to have to wait to do that to make this episode. So we're going to talk about a few little things here that you guys will experience when you're playing in your world. So you've got your town hall and you've got your building tool. So what you can do is use the building tool and walk up to the location you want to place it and right click on the floor. Then up here where it says decorations, you can choose anything you have on you. So I have the builder on me. We'll come on to that later. Of course, you're going to select town hall to build the town hall. Then press escape and get yourself out of the way and have a little look at it. This is where spectator mode will help again. Obviously, I'm currently in creative. Uh, so uh, going into creative mode has its uses as well. Uh, obviously, I'm in creative because this is testing. But when you do slash game mode, you could put yourself in creative simply to sort of right click here and be able to look at things whilst you're in midair. Because in specy mode, you don't have that. So you can't right click. Anyway, so this is what Acacia looks like. So again, we can rotate this. We can flip it if we want to flip it. Uh, and we can move it using the blue arrows here and change the Y value of it. So, excuse me. So, uh, some little things to note here. Uh, first of all, what you're looking at is a level one. So if you are future proofing, maybe look at level five and see how it's going to look at level five. Uh, it's a lot more impressive and inspiring to, to get you to want to do the build and stuff like that. But also it's going to make your town planning a lot easier because at the end of the day, if you are planning to upgrade to level five, it's no good having a level one town that looks great and a level five town that's like on top of each other and, and not looking good. Uh, so in here we have all these different designs and depending on the building you'll have more or less of these available so you can see here the different types you can go for and that's why i said create a creative world yourself like i've got here and have a look at all these different designs and which one's going to fit your theme best because there are all different ones uh, you can see here sort of the the difference in the town halls i mean look at this this is basically a whole castle unto itself uh, so you definitely want to check all of that out now once you've found a design you like, hit the plus arrow a few times and hit it until you can see it is clearly above the ground, okay? And then you want to go down until you're on the ground and get it just right like that, okay? Spend some time with that because you don't want to mess the Y level up. It'd be very easy, for example, if I pressed down once again, that looks like it's good, right? Like you'd go, yeah, that's about right. Um, but look at this. This is the entrance way, and this is why you got to check these things. So actually, it needs to be down there. So why it looked like it was correct before is because in this building here, there will be some sort of basements. So it'll be down here, for example. There's probably a basement you can't see because of the grass. There'll be something like that going on, right? So you do want to really check this stuff out, guys, and make sure you are placing it correctly. Uh, another thing, if we go back up to, say, Acacia, that can sort of help you out, is when you see these brown boxes here, which uh, a lot of the builds will have, we can press down until they are level with the floor, and we know that's the correct height. And you can see here, this would be the staircase to get us in, and that's how that looks. Uh, so that's pretty much everything you need to know. All these different levels, all these different designs, and what have you. So once you've got the one that you want to build, you then hit the green tick, and you will have this. You'll get the advancement and you'll have this. Uh, and it will have like some fence around it and that type of thing when you try to build it. Which basically if you come in here, you could try to build it. But first you have to create your colony. So create a colony. There we go. We got a colony. And there's the fence I was talking about, which is sort of the build area for your buildings. Now every building you build in mine colonies will have this fence around it. Okay, this is called construction tape. You can destroy it. It does not matter. You can also, if you really uh, were that way inclined, um, excuse me, if I can spell it. You can make it yourself as well. It's reasonably cheap to make if you really want to. You just need wool uh, and you need the uh, sticks here. I uh, don't know why you'd want that, but you could. Anyway, so we have a colony. Uh, very good. So we got this right here. 
And uh, at the moment, no one's here and stuff, and it's just called Kaizen's Colony. You can hit this button here to rename it if you want and type in whatever you want. Uh, and this is your Town Hall GUI, which we'll come on to more in a future episode. This is just how we place it for now, and this is sort of, you know, how that works. Okay, so after some time, your first uh, citizen will arrive. And guys, there's a cool thing. There's a chance he'll be called Kaizen. <laughs> I donated to my colonies on the Patreon at the level where I got to choose a citizen name. So Kaizen is one of them. I chose Kaizen J Sparrow. I think it's randomized those. But if you guys get a Kaizen, I absolutely must see that, okay? Send me screenshots on my Discord, link below. Uh, but anyway, we didn't. We got Volker U Gorf Hop. Okay, hey Volker, uh, maybe call him F for short. F in chat for F. <laughs> um, anyway, so F has joined us, uh, that's very good. Uh, so now what we can do, if we right click here, uh, we can go onto the build options for example, and we could try to select a builder and build the building, but we'll get a message in chat saying here that we require a builder's hut. So although the town hall is the first sort of mine colonies building that you, you place, the first one you actually build really is gonna be your builder's hut. So let's say we, we come over here and we think we want to build our builder's hut there. Again, we right click using the builder wand and we select here builder, which is pre-selected for us. Press escape so we can come back here and we can have a look at it. So I generally go through the same process. Let's go to level five. Let's look at the different things I might want to build out of. And let's say we really think that uh, medieval dark oak is going to be the coolest. Okay, very good. So now we can see what a level five looks like. And we might say, you know, actually, we want that to be facing into the town hall so that it's entrance here. Uh, you can enter here and there's going to be a street in between or whatever. Again, comes down to planning out our colony. You see more people are turning up. Christina's here now. You, incidentally, you'll get four citizens that turn up before you need to build houses. We'll talk about houses in a future episode. So here we go. This is what a level five builder looks like. Again, we want to check this out. You see, that was too low. It looked like it was right, but it's not because these stairs lead up to it. Are there any more? No. Okay, so there we go. So there's a bit of common sense involved. You can see that, okay, at this level, they can enter it. If you make it higher, they can without you having to build something, which may suit you depending on your build. But anyway, the point is, there it is. So once we're happy, we hit the tick. Okay, so our builder has now been placed and uh, it's ready to be built. But the next thing we need to do you come over to the builder's hut, we right click, and we open up this interface right here. Okay, so a worker has been automatically assigned, okay? Uh, you can manage the workers, we could, uh, if we wanted to manage this person, uh, and, and later on in the game stuff, I'll show you about you know, hiring and firing and sort of stuff. But basically what we can do here is go to build options, select the builder, which is Falk, and uh, then hit build building. And uh, there we go, it says there, start your builder, he's gonna build the building. Okay, very good. Uh, so. Okay, so the villagers talk, the citizens talk, I should say. I don't know if you guys heard that. He was saying something. Um, but basically, uh, he's he's going to want to build this building now. But you need to know what uh, he needs to build the building and what requests he has and stuff like that. So we're now going to talk about two incredibly useful things that you need to get early game. The first one, guys, is the clipboard. This is how it is made, okay? You need sticks, you need the leather, and again, your building tool. So for now, uh, as we're doing this in creative mode, I'm just going to quickly show you the clipboard. The second thing is the resource scroll. So here's your resource scroll. Again, pretty simple to make. Comes back to that lever. Told you you guys are going to need it. <laughs> it's definitely useful. And we get the resource scroll. Very good. So the clipboard here, uh, what we need to do is go to the uh, town colony and shift right click. So we've registered it to our colony. And then when I right click, it will show me any requests that the citizens have. The resource scroll, we're going to go to this builder block right here, shift right click, so it's registered to that colony. And when I right click with that, it tells me all of the things that Falk requires to build this building. And we then must fulfill them. We must go and get all of these things, the, the crafting table, the cobble, all that stuff. And we have options at this point. We can right click him, go to his inventory and drop them right in here. Uh, be sure to give them food as well, guys. We'll come on to like food and protecting citizens and stuff like that in a future episode, but do give them food. Uh, otherwise they may not work. <laughs> so do that. The other way you can do it in the builder's hut right here is uh, you can hit that arrow at the top there. This is this one right here. And you can hit these buttons here to give him the stuff, right? So we hit them like that because we're in creative mode. It will just give him all the stuff that way. And uh, once he's got the stuff, he'll start working basically. Finally, you could also go to the builder site, go into the inventory and place things in here. So there's different ways of doing this, guys. But once he's got all the stuff he needs, he will start building the building and he will keep doing it until it is built. And once the builder's hut has been completely finished, then you can go over to your town hall building, right click it, 
hit the build options and hit build building by selecting the builder and building the building. So that's how you get started with the town hall and the builder. Uh, so hopefully that's helped and cleared things up. But if you have any questions, as I say, leave a comment, join my Discord. There's a Reddit going, there's Twitter. You guys have got so many options. So do get hold of me and I'll always be happy to try my best to help you out. At this point, I want to actually mention that uh, the Mine Colony's website, which also leads to their Discord, which is a fantastic resource if you ever need help. That'll be in the video description. There'll be a link to that. There'll also be uh, a link to the uh, Mine Colonies wiki, which is incredibly useful as a resource for telling you everything you need to know about the game. So guys, you now know everything you need, hopefully, <laughs> to get started in Mine Colonies. If you think I've missed anything out or you're confused, leave a comment and let me know, guys. I'll try my best to help you. And let's make this a sharing of ideas as well. If you have a cool idea for your own colony or you just want to talk about things, Mine Colonies, guys, the comment section is a great place, as are all the resources I've mentioned in this video, like my Discord and stuff like that. Link down in those comments. Uh, I just want to say as well, if you are new here, then uh, welcome to the channel and please do consider subscribing and liking this video. It really helps me out and uh, it would be great to get this series as popular as the last one was. So thank you for your time in watching that today and for helping me out with that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one, guys, or maybe in one of those communities I mentioned below. But for this episode, that is about it. So as always, guys, I want to say thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.